Hi, hospitality. So, um, I was just with HACCP. I feel like it's something that we that we often struggle with because it just seems like, you know, it seems like this um this complicated table situation, and there's all these steps, and it's all this, you know, critical control points and blah blah blah. And it's just yeah, it can. It's one of those ones that you're like, oh, I know it relates to hygiene and food safety, but I just can't get my head around it. Anyway. Um, I wanted to use this website here, which is actually, um, let's see if I can drag this up a little bit. Maybe it went there. Yeah, there you go. So it's foodsafety.com.au um, and it is the Australian Institute of Food Safety. And I feel like they have, they actually summarize it really, really well. Um, it's just fun fact. HACCP is a food safety and risk assessment plan that was originally developed in the 60s by NASA. So that's cool. Anywho, so yes, we have the, let me just zoom in. So yes, we have the seven steps of HACCP here, which, which you do need to know. So we'll let's start from the beginning. So let's start at the very beginning. HACCP stands for Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points and often, um, and sorry, and outlines seven principles of food safety. So it's important to think from the very beginning that HACCP is a food safety program or a food safety plan. It's important to know that because they might not, in the, in the exam question, it might not actually say the word HACCP. It might ask you to um, explain a food safety program or analyze the effectiveness of a food safety program in preventing um, um, food poisoning to customers or something like that. Your brain has to say, oh, food safety program equals HACCP. So HACCP is an example of a food safety program or a food safety plan. And what is um, excellent about it is that it is, um, I think it might have it down here. Ooh, no, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it is actually nationally recognized. Oh, where's this? Here we go. The seven HACCP principles are included in the international standard and are implemented in many food safety programs around the world. So it's not just like, oh yeah, that cafe down the road has this safety program. If you, if you have HACCP, it's in, it's an international standard system. So it's, it, it's, um, it's known to be a, like the, a good system to prevent, um, food hazards in a food, commercial food business. So what are our seven steps? This is one of those things that you just have to try to learn them. I'm going to be honest with you. But if you think about it in a bit of a logical way. Okay. So let's pretend you get chicken. You're getting chicken breast delivered because you've got schnitzel on your menu. Okay. So step one is think first brainstorm with the chicken. What are all the stages that that chicken breast that you're getting delivered what are all the stages it's going to go through? It's going to go through delivery. It's uh, when you have to get it from the delivery truck out the front. It's then going to need to be stored in the cool room because you're not going to cook it straight away. And then it's going to need to be prepared. And that might include, um, well, it depends if the storage was freezing, you might need to thaw it first. Then in preparation, you need to think about things like cross-contamination, how long it's out on the bench in the danger zone, um, blah, blah, blah. And then it's going to have a cooking and there's going to be safety things to do with cooking. And then there's going to be service. And then there's going to be after service. Now, depending, like most of the time, service is kind of the end in like a restaurant, but sometimes not like sometimes you know you might not use it all sometimes things may be able to be restored to later and that's when two hour four hour rule comes in blah blah blah. anyway the point is you first start by brainstorming the stages that that food's going to travel through delivery storage preparation cooking service and then restorage or disposal and once you've brainstormed these you have to do these seven steps in kind of all of those stages so you, you step, start with step one, hazard analysis. What are the hazards that could occur during delivery? What is a hazard that could happen during delivery to that chicken breast? 
So the truck could be, um, the delivery truck might not be temperature controlled properly. Um, there might be, you know, the packaging might be interrupted or there, I don't know, it might be feathers or cockroaches in them, whatever. So they, we've identified a hazard. Okay, step two, is that hazard a critical control point? So that means, so control, control point. Is it, is it, it's a point that we need to control it because if we don't control it, something bad could happen. But is it critical? So that means is, if we don't control it, is it likely to cause a food poisoning later to a customer? Once we've identified that, we can move on to limits. Okay, so what's our limit? What is our rule? So what is our, like, uh, let's say, let's go to, um, let's go to the cooking, cooking section of our, you know, over here when we're up to cooking. So when we're cooking our chicken breast, maybe the critical limit could be that it must be deep fried, um, in a hot fat or oil, um, at a temperature of 180 to 220 for a minimum of 10 minutes or 15 minutes or something like that. So it's something specific that, that everyone at that business is going to follow um, for when they make the chicken schnitzel. So it's like usually a time and a temperature or a must be stored above this temperature or below this temperature. Like it's, it's like a specific rule. It's a limit. What's the limit we have to follow so that we can control that hazard from happening? or prevent it from happening. Now, um, monitoring, mon like critical control monitoring, this is where we, we, we make sure that this is happening correctly. So we're, we're making sure, like how, how are we going to make sure that it has been 15 minutes or that it is at, you know, this amount of temperature? So it could be things like, um, you know, specific, specifically outlined steps that happen maybe the deep fryer has like a beep so you're not just like oh is it done yet is it done yet is it done yet or you know what if someone accidentally turned the temperature up a bit more and so it looks done on the outside and it's like raw on the inside because someone blasted up the deep fryer so there has to be some sort of way that you know it's a rule in the business that someone's responsibility is to like check that temperature check that time there might be a buzzer there or a beep thing or there might be a little ticker box somewhere so it's some sort of monitoring measure Corrective action is if things go wrong. So if if maybe it still is undercooked or the, the van wasn't under under five degrees. So sometimes the corrective action is there isn't one. It's just like throw out or do not accept. Other times it can be, you know, it can be, there can be a corrective action. It might be um, keep cooking for a further five minutes um, until done in the middle or something like that so yeah the corrective action is if the critical limit and the monitoring has somehow failed in some way and that's because you know you've got to add in human error and stuff like that as well so if something you know if these things don't go to plan can we still correct it um and then you've got your like record keeping these these sort of proceed these are sort of your managerial record keeping procedures and da, da, da. and this is what helps you in court like if you to make sure that you can prove that you did all this right for all of those stages that that food moved through. And so you can be like, yeah, there's no way I caused food poisoning at my restaurant because look, we did it all correctly. It's foolproof. Anywho, so I'm just going to read this to you, just this bit here. So HACCP can be applied to all processes throughout each and every stage of the food supply chain. So that's those stages I was talking about. This includes production, preparation, packaging, distribution, or in a kitchen, delivery, storage, prep, cooking, service, etc. As a food safety initiative, HACCP is a preventative system. I love that. The whole point of it is to prevent food poisoning, not to like, you know, it's not a reactive approach like, oh shit, something happened, like let's just fix it. No, it's preventative. It focuses on potential, so not already existing, but potential physical, chemical, and biological hazards. So let's identify all the possible things that could go wrong because if we identify all the possible things that could occur, um, then we should be able to um, develop control measures and design control measures to mitigate or, or counteract those 
potential hazards. So yeah, it's like forward thinking. What's all the possible things that could go wrong with this thing that could make someone sick? And then let's design control measures to make sure that that doesn't happen or that if it does happen, what we can do to fix it. Um, the seven HACCP principles are included in the international standard, as I read before, and it's all around the world. So it's a really good way to make sure. And, you know, it is it is a lot of work. And so I understand that a lot of smaller cafes aren't going to do that. But your big franchises, yeah, it's definitely a must. The HACCP principles are important for businesses involved in all areas of the food industry because they help maintain the best food safety practices. That's really important because, you know, in all areas of the food industry, because it's not it's not good enough for just the restaurant. It's not good enough for just sea level down, down at Cronulla to have a HACCP plan because what if their suppliers don't have a HACCP plan? And so they get the food, but it's all, all these hazards have already occurred at back at the warehouse or back at the farm. So... It's really important that all areas of the food industry that that food travels through before it even gets to the cafe or the restaurant, it's important that they also have HACCP applied or have some form of food safety plan applied um, to make, make sure that the hazards are um, prevented everywhere that food exists from and to. Um, each food business is different and therefore they're going to have, they're going to have different food safety processes and procedures, but having HACCP principles, those seven principles allow a business to design, to sort of use it as a template so that you can apply the same steps to your business that relates to your food and how you're using that food. So, you know, back at the warehouse or at the farm, they're not cooking the chicken, but they still they, they, the chicken still goes through stages of potentially being in a hazardous environment. And even though the cooking doesn't happen there, they still have to design control measures at their end before they get to you. Now, below here are these steps in more detail. So, I mean, you have this in your booklet anyway, but I think I like how this is just in little little chunks. I think it's it, it's easy to understand the way it's written. So I would recommend that you look at this now. Okay, so step one is hazard analysis. Here's a really good little summary of what that's about and how that works. Um, and then you've got cr what critical control points are, often referred to as CCPs, critical limits, monitoring and controlling, corrective action, procedures, record keeping. We often call it validation and record keeping. Um, so yeah, I, I do really, really recommend that you go on the Australian Institute of Food Safety, food safety up here, um, dot com dot au, and use this as part of your study notes to prepare for HACCP. I know we have the book up, but sometimes looking at, looking at a few different versions I, I even like to go onto YouTube and watch just some random YouTube videos on HACCP because um, because HACCP is international that you, you don't have to worry about, oh, let's just find an Australian one. Like there's so many different little animations and stuff that, you know, give yourself every opportunity to understand it the best you possibly can so that if you do get an, a question or not, which often it falls into the um, extended responses, you would be able to fill up a booklet really, you know, diving deep into this and talking about all those stages, talking about all those steps, giving industry examples of how it could apply, be applied, you know, even potentially being able to draw up a table showing, you know, oh, look, here's examples of critical limits, you know, it has to be under four degrees for a maximum of three days and blah, blah, blah. blah. And, you know, just, yeah, reject the raw, like, being able to understand it well enough that you'd be able to sort of create a mock-up table that represents your understanding and also be able to talk about what all these things mean. That's what you want. So yeah, I, I just think, yes, it's kind of like, uh, do I, it's kind of boring to learn, but it's not, it's not hard to learn once you understand it. It's quite a logical and systematic approach to food safety. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped in some way and yeah, <laughs> good luck. Let's see what happens if I just type in HACCP. Oh, whoopsies. HACCP. What is HACCP? Internationally recognized system for reducing the risk of food safety, of risk of safety hazards in food. There's our seven steps. Yeah, 
Anyway, there's so much. Hazard analysis, critical intelligence. All right, ciao.